Amen. Again, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, with me to Exodus 33, verse 14 and 15. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the presence of the King. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm, I, I realize the time. I realize it's 11.53. Normally, I try to shut down by 12.30. I can't promise 12.30. But I'll try to be as close to that as I can be. Amen. Amen. And he said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Then he said, this is Moses, to him, to God. If your presence does not go up with us, do not bring us up from here. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the abiding presence of God. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you this morning. We come to you grateful, thankful, that in this house today that we have sensed you. There's no question on my mind that you have been with us already this day. Thank you for your people's worship and their praise to you. For you inhabit the praises of your people, and you have truly proved that true again today in this house. Oh, God, speak to our hearts. Help us, God, to declare your word. Oh, God, I pray, God, that you would again would do a mighty work in this house, even this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. God, who is almighty. God who knows all things. God who can form a sparrow and make a human being. Can create planets, sun, moon, stars. Do all these things. Believe it or not, the scripture tells us that God's spirit is symbolized by a dove. And if you know anything about a dove, you know that they are a bird that will just don't take much to cause them to be startled to move. Hallelujah. And so this almighty and powerful God that we are trying to serve today, there's some aspects about him that we need to understand. Although he is all strength and all power and all might, amen, there are things that he will not do. Amen. He will not force you to praise him. He will not force you into his presence. Hallelujah. And one thing that will cause God to, if you please, run from you this morning is the fact that you are sinful and that you're, pro you're proud in your sin and you have no intentions of changing. I don't want to be like that today. I don't want to be like that. I realize in this room today there are people here that, you know, we talk about the presence of God and perhaps you're saying, what presence of God? And... You know, and, and, and uh, you may say, well, I, I did feel a little something, amen. I, I enjoyed the music or whatever you may attempt to uh, speak to someone else or to yourself. Uh, I, have a, I have a cell phone. Just hang on, I'm just an introduction. I have a cell phone, okay? And uh, I have a tendency to put that thing on low. In fact, there are days that I've had it on low all day and didn't realize I had it on low. And then when I actually look at my phone, there are quite a few messages on there, voicemails and text messages. And I realized that I got a lot of catching up to do. But amen, that the receiver, if you please, of my phone was so low, so low I could not detect it. In this room this morning are people that need to turn your receiver up you need to get the in my on my phone there's that little button on the side there you know and i watch the slide as it goes shoop, over to loud amen you need to push the button today will, will you do that with us this morning in this house will you in the moments that we are going to be here today would you would you do this this morning would you attempt amen this day in this house well, for whatever reason you're here, just somehow, you know, I'm going to try to find God. I'm going to try to reach out to God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something about, 
I, I just, I came here not knowing what to expect. And I came here and just thought it'd be just another Sunday for me. But I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the receiver up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will, will you do that today in this room? Will you do that today? If you read chapter 32 of Exodus, you would see one of the most tragic chapters of the scripture. A people that God had delivered from Egypt with a great hand, powerful hand, who had judged the deities of Egypt, who in that last plague had caused the death of every firstborn, firstborn man, woman, or animal. And Israel had gone out with a high hand. Amen. And they had gone to the Red Sea, and at the Red Sea they had again saw God move in such a miraculous way. Amen. When the waters parted and they went across on dry ground. And then to see their enemy follow them into the sea and God just to close the waves over them. And amen. As they rejoiced on the other side, watching Amen. The vanquishing of their enemy who had never again ever put a whip to their back. They were excited about God. They were excited about what he had done. It was a day of rejoicing. It was a day of thanking God. The Bible tells us that in the daytime there was a pillar of cloud that was over them. And I, I, I don't think it was a pencil sized cloud. Because they're going to do a lot of traveling in the desert. Have you ever been in the desert? That sun is hot. I remember being out there on the Pacific Ocean. Amen. And when I was in the shade, there was coolness. But when the sun hit me, I could feel the warmth of the sun. I don't think it was a pencil-sized cloud. I think it was air conditioning. Amen. When the sun got up to its height. And in the nighttime, God had a nightlight, amen, that just, amen, just covered all the camp. It was the presence of an almighty God. But in chapter 32, amen, some things had transpired. You see, amen, they were a people that hadn't really learned about their God. And they'd seen his exploits and they'd seen his greatness, but there were things that they quite didn't understand about him. And Moses had gone up on the mount to receive information and understanding and bring back to God's people God's plan for them. But he had been gone too long for them. And so they had said to Aaron, we need us a God. We need us a demonstration. We need us a God that we can look at and say, this is the one that has brought us out of Egypt. And so he had formed a golden calf. Of course, in his own words, he just threw all the gold in a bangle. There was the calf. Didn't make a lot of sense to me, but you know, when you're trying to defend yourself, sometimes you explain things in a really strange way. And then they had, they had got together. And if you read this scripture carefully, it said that they said of that golden calf, this is the God that brought us out of Egypt. And if you read the rest of the passage of scripture right there, they said that we're going to have a feast unto the Lord tomorrow. Capital L-O-R-D, which was a feast of Jehovah or to Yahweh. And so they were simply saying that this calf represents God. And we're going to have us a celebration tomorrow. And the Bible tells us that they sat down to eat and drink. And then they rose up to play. I don't have time to tell you what it means by playing there. Just let me tell you this much. It wasn't hide and seek. And God saw. And God talked to Moses. And Moses came off the mountain angry. And he ground that golden calf into powder and forced them to drink it. Now you may think that that's quite a harsh thing to do. But it's not. It's not. Amen. When, you, when, when you're trying to serve God and you just can't seem to make up your mind who God is, there, there's drastic measures that need to take place in your life. And so, he forces him to drink that 
gold as it's been ground into powder. And then he looks around and says, who's on the Lord's side? And the Levites join him. And there is a cost of consecration today, ladies and gentlemen. For they went through the camp of Israel and they slew 3,000. Amen. And again, some of you don't get it and don't understand what's behind everything that's going on. And God told Moses, I can't be with this people anymore. You see, if I come amongst him, I'll consume them. And so God, amen, steps back from Israel. And when he steps back from Israel, amen, it brings, amen, despair to Moses. And Moses pleads with God, amen. And Moses cries out to God. And we read to you this morning, amen, that God, amen, in his great grace, hallelujah, said my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And Moses says to God, in my words, don't you ever do this again, God. Because if your presence is not with us and doesn't go with us, then I'm gonna stay right here. I'm preaching to you this morning about the abiding presence of God. I'm preaching to you about something that I so much enjoy when I come to the house of the Lord and God's people begin to worship and praise him. And I begin to sense that familiar spirit of my God as he begins to visit us, as he begins to move upon us, hallelujah. And I don't want, any, I don't want that to go in the least little bit. I want his presence. I want to be in the abiding presence of my God. Hallelujah. 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 You may think that it's just by accident that these things take place in this building. But there are people that pray. There are people that have learned how to worship God. There are people that have learned Amen. As it says in Psalms 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. There's just something about being in God's presence. There's something wonderful, amen, about being with him. Hallelujah. You can sit and watch your television all day, but I'd rather be in the house of God. I'd rather be in the presence of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can do whatever you want today, but the most precious part of this day has been right now what I have felt in this house. You may not understand what I'm saying right now. You may not have no clue, but I'm here to tell you, there's nothing like the abiding presence of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was such a serious issue. Amen. If you ever read the scripture in that area, you will see that Moses took his tent and he moved it some approximately a half a mile outside of the entire camp. And if you wanted God, you had to make the journey out of the camp to Moses' tent. And we know it is the tabernacle, uh, the tent. Amen. I can't remember exactly what it's called in the scripture at the moment. Praise God, but this tent became the place where you met with the Lord. This tent became the place, amen, this tabernacle, amen, was a place to commune with God. It was the place that when Moses went to, amen, every man, every man would come to his tent door and he would look to see Moses out there and he would see him communing with God. Hallelujah. And every man, every family, amen, was willing, amen, to feel and sense and know that God was talking to the man of God. Amen. There's something about the abiding presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to understand God's hierarchy and how God operates. God, God, God is a God, amen, of authority and power. God operates through submission. And some of us have never learned that aspect 
of God. If you want God's presence to abide with you, the first thing you have to do is submit to God. Help us, God. Help us, God. The abiding presence of God. We read in Psalms 27, in verse 4, we read the words of David. He says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to acquire in his temple. When David writes that there is no physical temple in Jerusalem. What he's simply telling us is the most, the most precious thing to me is being in God's presence. He had learned that out on the hillside as he played his harp and as he talked to God. And we have many of the Psalms. Amen. He was a man that understood, amen, coming in to that abiding presence. It was so precious to him. Hear me this morning. If you are going to do something for God, the very first thing that you are ha going to have to overcome is fear. That's the first thing, amen, to do anything for God, amen, you have got to overcome fear, amen. Fear does not produce confidence. I'll tell you what produces confidence, the presence of the Lord. For David would say in Psalms 27, whom shall I fear, amen, of whom shall I be afraid, and again, my heart shall not fear. And he would say again in verse 3, in this I will be confident. If you want to do something for God, you got to get in his presence. You got to stay in his presence. Because all fear will leave you. And you will find yourself with confidence that goes beyond what you can understand. I know what it is, amen, to be afraid. And I know what it is to be nervous and have my knees knock. And I know what it is to say, God, do I have to do this? But when I get in the presence of the king, when his presence is upon me, I can tell you that all feelings of fear dissipate. They're gone. There's something about being in the abiding presence of God that moves upon my soul. Hallelujah. I know in his presence I can find a place to hide. Hallelujah. Is there danger around us? Absolutely. While you were talking today about, amen, giving cookies to our police force in Kalamazoo. I don't know when it was. Seven people were killed. Amen. They were shot. But somebody, they didn't even know why he did it. This is a day to remain in the presence of the Lord. If you think, amen, we're living in good times, we are not. Paul said, evil men shall wax worse and worse. We're living in the closing of days. If you know how to get a hold of God, this is the day to get a hold of God. If you know anything about getting into the presence of God, this is the day to get into the presence of God. Why don't you put your iPad away and pray? Why don't you put your cell phone down and seek the face of God? Why don't you throw your intellect out the window and say, God, I need you today. I need you. I want to be in your presence, God. I don't read anywhere in the Bible that God said he would choose to answer us through our cell phone and all of our electronics. Amen. It simply comes when we seek his face and get into his presence. And there's nothing like the abiding presence of God. That produces confidence in me. That's not there. If you know anything about me, I had a boatload of inferiority. And if you've ever felt inferior, it's quite a struggle. 
It's quite an issue. I mean, it's very easy to talk your way out, talk yourself out of doing anything for God. Hallelujah. It took getting in the presence of the king to remove all those stupid issues that I had. Amen. Just being a swimming in his presence, basking in his presence. It just, it changed me. It did something to me. There's nothing like the abiding presence of God. That one that will hide me in his pavilion. He will set me upon it. A high rock. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're having a struggle today, the answer is not the psychiatrist. The answer is getting into the presence of God. The answer is not getting another prescription and medication to somehow ease, amen, your troubled mind. The answer is getting into the presence of God. Hallelujah. David would say in Psalms 27, You've been my help. Is there anybody that can testify that today, that when you get in his presence, as difficult as the issues may be, you have found God to be your help. Hallelujah. The abiding presence of God. I stand with Moses today. If he, God, if you're not going, then I'm not going. I want to be in your presence, God. Amen. Anything I have done to offend you, anything that was on towards towards you, God, remove it from my life. Amen. I want you to know, amen, that they, were, they came to mourning when they found out that God wasn't going to go with them. And he told them, I'm not going with you because you're stiff-necked people. Do we have, no, don't raise your hand. Do we have any stiff-necked people in the house today? I know you're not going to even own up to it. I don't blame you. I wouldn't own up to it either. Hallelujah. But to get in God's presence, they stripped themselves of all their ornaments. Hallelujah. And then they waited on God. Okay, now there's, there's a, my God, okay. I'm out here and I don't care. Some of you, your jewelry means more to you than your service to God. You think being decorated with some, amen, trinket somehow brings beauty and glory to you. It does not. What brings beauty and glory to you today is being in the presence of the king. Uh, many years ago as I was struggling, I was praying right over here on a Saturday. And I had my Bible open. And as I had my Bible open, amen, I saw my eyes fill on Exodus or Acts chapter 18, amen. And I read, amen, now the Lord spoke, verse 9, to Paul in the night by a vision, amen. He was troubled. He was discouraged in Corinth. And God came to him in a night vision. And he said, do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. And then verse 10 says this. For I am with you. There's nothing better than the presence, the abiding presence of an almighty God. When I saw that scripture, it literally was riveted into my mind. It jumped off the pages of the book. I felt my spirit begin to rise as I came to an understanding that God was with me. And that he wanted me to speak and not be silent. And he told me they're not going to be able to hurt you. And then he, he ended it with this. I have many people in this city. I haven't preached about this in a long time. But I'm here to tell you. There are more people outside that want God. That are inside right now. The word of the Lord is true. The word of the Lord is forever settled in heaven. I'm here to tell you, and I prophesy to you right now, there are many people outside that want what you have felt today. They want to be in the abiding presence of God. They want to experience what's happening in your life, in their life. Hallelujah. 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 In Hebrews chapter 13, God told the Hebrew believers, I will never leave you 
nor forsake you. Hallelujah. When Paul was arrested in Jerusalem, amen, and they treated him quite harshly until they found out that he was a Roman citizen. And while he was under the protection of the garrison in Jerusalem, there were men that conspired together, 40 of them, that they were, they were going to fast and they made a vow. We're going to kill that man. We're not going to eat or drink until we kill that man. Amen. And the Bible tells us, amen, that uh, his nephew somehow overheard this cons conspiring and he went to the Roman officials with it. But in Acts 23 and verse 11, the Bible says the following night, the Lord stood by him. The abiding presence of God came to where Paul was. Amen. Had a word for him and told him to be of good cheer, Paul. For as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, and you must also bear witness at Rome. There's something about the abiding presence of God. It'll carry you beyond your physical abilities. It'll take you to places, amen, that you never dreamed you would be. It will. It will. It will usher you, hallelujah, in the presence of a holy God and an angelic host. Hallelujah. And you may, you may sometime hear the fluttering of their wings. Amen. As you get into the presence of an almighty God who said that he would be with you. I've been on the ocean. Some of you have been on the ocean for months. I just had seven days of being on the ocean. You know, I'm a land lubber. When I lose sight of land, I get a little concerned. I depend upon the captain of the ship and the seaworthiness of the vessel. Hallelujah. I watched some guys paint the side of the ship at one port I was at. And I'm thinking to myself, my God, this ship needs some repairs. I hope internally that everything's okay. I hope all the water that's supposed to be outside stays outside. I've never been in a storm at sea. You've been in a storm at sea. And probably you guys have been in a storm at sea. There's nothing more violent than when those waves become so high. I have read amen of 70 foot waves amen that one of them actually hit the side of a of a cruise ship amen and i saw pictures of the damage that it did to that ship there's something violent about a storm amen you've lost all ability amen to uh just to get to a place or port and, and a place to throw the anchors down for sometimes the water is just too deep paul is in the midst of a storm. He's on board the ship. Amen. He was on board for many days, many days of struggle in this storm. So much so that they had lightened the ship. They were not eating. Amen. They were fighting for their existence. And then Paul came to them and he said to them in Acts 27, and now I urge you to take heart for there will be no loss of life among you but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve. You see, when you live in the abiding presence of God, there is direct communication with the master. And just at those moments when you feel so down, all of a sudden, inspiration comes in the room it may be in the form of an angel it may be a word of god from somebody that you don't even know but god comes on the scene there's nothing like the abiding presence of the lord 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I would that every young person here would treasure. I mean, I watched some of you today. You's in the building. Amen. But your mind was somewhere else. Some of you adults were the same way. You's in the building. Amen. You know what we say? The light's on, but nobody's at home. You're somewhere else. I don't want to walk in this house and sit through a service without having experienced the Almighty God. I don't want to walk into the cell. I don't want to have such an attitude that God can't get through to me because I'm all bent out of shape. I want to get in the presence of my God. We just sung about it just a few moments ago when I get in his presence. Every doubt that I have in a moment goes away. You got doubt this morning. There's one solution. You got to get in the presence of God. And what is so great about being in this house today is there are people that have come here with that purpose in mind. And they'll help you to get in God's presence. How do they help you? Because when they get there, God just moves around the whole place. And people that haven't been praising him begin to feel something. And it moves on them. And it, it does something for them. And it works on them. Hallelujah. Do you know, do you know this morning just how close you are to a deliverance? Do you know just how close you are to a miracle in your life? Do you know just how close you are to the baptism of the Holy Ghost? If you would call on God, if you would believe God today, God would do exactly what his word says because we are in the abiding presence of God. <laughs> Paul's in a Horrible Roman prison. He's there. He sends a letter to Timothy. He says, Timothy, make sure you bring my cloak. I left it with Carpus in Troas. I want my books, especially my parchments. I want you to bring them. Then he tells us, Alexander, remember Alexander the coppersmith. He, he did much harm. I don't know if he had come to Rome to testify against Paul. But he, he did much harm. And, Amen. And Paul says, you know, the Lord will reward him for what he's done. And then he says to Timothy, you need to also be aware of him. For he has greatly resisted our words. Hmm. And then he says, verse 16, at first, at my first offense, no one stood with me. But all forsook me. Then he said, may not be charged against them. All the guys that had been there from Ephesus and everybody that was a believer in Rome, they just, they deserted Paul. He was standing alone. Yeah. But you got to read verse 17. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. There's something about the body and presence of the Lord you know others may desert you they are human and they they fail and they they say the wrong thing and they just you know they they they, they may leave you alone but nobody can keep God out oh, yeah. hallelujah the abiding presence of God in Exodus 33 verse 16 Moses says, for how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us. So what you have felt here today in this house is the grace of God. Is this too much? Is it time for me to just stop here? I see you. You're struggling. It's got warm in the house. and I see that. And Hallelujah. You see, there is something that separates us from many other churches. And Moses says, so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. What separated them? The very 
presence of God. I was in a church, I would not name what denomination it was many years ago. And I was there and I was sitting in the, I was just there as an observer. And when they sang, I sang. And when they praised God, I praised God. And I did feel the presence of God. But then they all began to chant. I think they must have thought they were speaking in tongues. And, but when they did that stuff, I mean, it was like the spigot went off. I could not sense God while they did that. I could not. He was just like he, he just moved on. In other words, I realize this is just part of their tradition. And, and this is just what they do. And, and it wasn't drawing God's presence. But when they begin to praise God, immediately I begin to feel his presence. There was sitting behind me a woman. I don't know who she was. But in that place, it was in the basement of the church. They wouldn't have this stuff going on upstairs. They had it in the basement. And uh, I heard her begin. I knew why she was weeping. God was touching her. Even in that place where there was a lot of formalism and a lot of tradition and things that were really not pleasing to God, God visited. But what disturbed me more than anything else that day was that while she is weeping, I hear a voice of a man. And I understand that this is, I, I'm not in charge here. This is not my church. This is, I'm, I'm visiting, so I'm not, I'm not going to make myself forward in this place. This, this is, the, so to speak, their show. And I heard them say to that woman, you don't need to cry. And my heart was grieved. <laughs> I have been crying today because I've been in the presence of my king. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. And this precious woman was weeping behind me. And she was being told, you don't have to have any expressions or emotions whatsoever. I'm here to tell you today, when God moves on your heart, you cry. You cry, sister. You blubber, sir. You just let yourself go when you get in his presence. Because there's nothing like being in the abiding presence of God. And it separates us. From many today, you see there are many churches have, and they have orchestras, and they have finery, and they got lights, and, and, they got, and they have many more people than we have in this building today. And they'll hear a lecture, and they'll, and they'll get, you know, something, you know, a, a sermonette or something like that. You know, something about just something positive, which, which is good. Amen. But they will walk out of that house, and they won't feel the convicting presence of God. And they won't feel the rest of God in that house. And they'll go home and they're going to say, we'll be back next Sunday. I sure hope it'll be different. But week after week after week, all it simply has done is appease flesh. I am not interested in a pleasing flesh today. I am interested in my spirit man being in the presence of the king. Hallelujah for, amen, amen. The outward man is perishing, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. So when I get in his presence, I know that I'm stronger than I was before I came in. I can say so much more. Amen. Moses said, don't, don't, don't go, God. Stay with us and make the journey with us. I would that we would listen to the leading of the Spirit. Many of us, many of us in this house make decisions without even consulting God. And we somehow think that we're going to get God's stamp of approval just because we made a decision. I'm here to tell you right now, I don't want to make any decision without first being in the abiding presence of my God. All you can do, you're, you're free white and 
Well, that, that's not a good way to put it. Sorry. <laughs> you, you can do whatever you want to do. You're an American. Go do it. But I'm here to tell you, don't expect God to just do what you want him to do. You see, we say we follow him. We say that we're children of God. We say that we're led of the Spirit. Well, then if we're led of the Spirit, we need to let the Spirit, amen, control our thinking. And the Word to inspire us to do His will. That cannot happen until we get in His presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I got to somehow find an end to this thing. Somehow. Somehow. Hallelujah. In the same chapter where Moses says, God, if you don't go, I'm not. I don't want to go either. He would say to the Lord, show me your way. And then later in the chapter, he would say, show me your glory. And you'll read the scripture. The Bible says that God showed him his hinder parts. He couldn't show him his full glory, his presence. Uh, You've you got to understand what's going on in this house. You've got an eternal God who lives out time, outside of time and space, who is infinite, who says, I'm going to visit your sphere of finite. I'm going to visit your sphere of space and time. And he walks in, amen, to our space and our time, the infinite one. I cannot Amen. Take that for granted when he visits me in my space and in my time and in my finite life. Hallelujah. That's what Moses wanted. Oh, God, visit me. Well, God just can't come visiting because he's all powerful. Amen. Man can't be in his presence. Amen. In fact, it's the Bible says no man has seen God and lived. Hallelujah. Oh, just hang out with me. Just hang out with me. My God. Matthew begins his gospel. Amen. And we read in chapter 1 and verse 23. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated, God with us. I don't have time to talk to you today about the fact that God visited our space and our time when he was born of a virgin in a place called Bethlehem. Literally, God with us. He is not the second person of a trinity he is the son of god he's the son of god and he's the son of man you'll never read that term god the son in the bible it's not there but god robed himself in flesh and dwelt amongst us came into my space in my time hallelujah God with us. And he chose 12 men. And he died on a cross. And he prayed as a man would pray when he said, Amen, Father, forgive them. And we said, My God, my God, why do you forsake me? It was the cry of a forsaken, forsaken man who was no longer in the presence of the king. The same way I felt. When I walked out of God's presence and decided not to serve him anymore, I felt that forsakenness come upon me. If you're not choosing to serve God today and you have served God, it may not feel bad right now. Just give it time. Just give it time. Just give it time when you want to call on him, when you got a problem and an issue, and you just can't seem to find him. There's nothing like being in the abiding presence of God. So Matthew starts 
with Emmanuel, God with us. Do you know how Matthew ends? All authority, Jesus said, has been given to me in heaven and earth. Verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus. Don't have time to explain that today. Matthew was there on the day of Pentecost. He stood with the eleven when Peter preached and told them to repent of their sins and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. I don't have time to explain it. If you're honest and sincere, you want to sit down with us, we're happy to do that. And then he said to them, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And then he said to them, Lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. Matthew begins with God with us and ends with God with us. I don't have time to talk to you about the Holy Ghost this morning. I can just tell you it was expedient that Jesus would go away so that the Comforter could come. And Jesus himself would say, I do not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He said, I am with you, but I shall dwell in you. I don't have time to go through that today. But there's something about the abiding presence of God. You got problems today, believer? You're not going to solve them. Amen, without prayer. You got problems today, believer? My solution for you is just simply get in the abiding presence of God. Because in that place, your perspective will change. In that place, you will understand what's happening in your life. You will know how God is working. Amen. I close with this this morning. Revelations chapter 22, verse 20 and 21. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. And the response of the believer who wants to be in his presence is, even so, come, Lord Jesus. And then the very last verse of the Bible says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. It's in his abiding presence that his grace is manifested to us. Hallelujah. I sat in a waiting area with others, and I thank those that were there with us that day, many family members, and I am closing. I had, it was a long day, 1st of January, long day. It started out quite puzzling and didn't seem to progress to any better situation. And I watched as a family would go into this room and shut the door and the doctor would talk to them. And then I would hear the wail and the tears and the crying. And I knew they had got bad information that day. And I'm sitting there out in the waiting area and I'm thinking to myself, well, well, somehow I'm just holding on, God. I'm believing that you're going to do something. And then I find myself and my family in that same room, sitting across from palliative care. And with my wife, we come to an agreement that we're going to pull everything that they got my son on. Are there tears? Of course. It was one of the worst days of my life. But I'm here to tell you, on the worst day of my life, 
the abiding presence of God was there. So I say again what Moses said to God. God, if you're not going, then I'm not going. And whatever you do, God, don't take your abiding presence from us. You know the abiding presence of God is not, it's not in all our finery of clothes. It's not in our talents. It's not in that at all. It's our faith in Him and our willingness to go to Him and our willingness to praise and worship Him and submit to Him. And it attracts the abiding presence of God. So I know what it is, ladies and gentlemen, to sit under the shadow of His wing. Hallelujah. I have no complaints today. None. I've got no complaints. I'm not mad at God. I don't feel God gave me some kind of raw deal. What's made the difference? The abiding presence of God. I'm here to tell you right now, brothers and sisters and my friends, you are going to need the abiding presence of God before this life is over. You're going to have to go into that place of safety where you can have confidence, where you can receive strength, and as it's said in Exodus, where you can find rest. Let's just bow our heads in this room today. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Would you feel after him right now? You say, I don't know how to feel after him. Just, just begin to talk to him. Because he's very, very close right now to this room. He is drawn to your need. He is drawn to your weakness. He is drawn to your confusion. But you've got to acknowledge him. He will allow you to walk out of this house without finding what you need. But if you will get in the abiding presence of God, He is going to do something for you today in this room. May I say, and I don't mean to be offensive by this in any way, but many times people just come to the altar for a couple minutes say their little prayers, and then they leave. I'm talking about praying until he's abiding with us. He's abiding with us. He will abide with you today. If you've got health problems, he will abide with you today. If you're trying to make decisions, he will abide with you today. He will. There's nothing like the abiding presence of God. Hallelujah. Let's just reach out to him right now in this room.